Today we're going to be throwing a whole bunch of images at Gigapixel AI Upscaler and we're going to see what kind of results we can get for different types of images and give you a bit of a rundown of how this thing works. So I've got Topaz Gigapixel open and I'm going to go here to browse images and I'm going to insert a whole bunch of images, not everything, but uh, just to have a bit of a diverse look at what we can achieve. I am going to work kind of with this for now and we're not going to spend a ton of time on each image but I'm going to show you just how powerful this is because you do have a really nice workflow. I click open. You can see down here I have a massive list of images that I can work with. So I'm going to actually unselect all of these and you can see we have all these to work with. I'm going to click on this first image called blur one and you can see it's a blurry photo. So I'll give it a chance to, pro to process. You can see it's already sharpened things up. I've got a few settings here which may be left over from a previous session, but we're going to explore those in a minute. If I head up to the face and just zoom out a little bit, you can see how good of a job it's actually done. It's sharpened up and tried to do the best job it can. Now, this doesn't look great straight off the bat, but considering how blurry the photo is, it's actually not bad. There's a, there's a few settings here I've been working with. There's low resolution, art and CG, lines and standard and we can also go here to auto so you see considering how blurry this this picture is it actually does a pretty good job of using ai to produce uh some details and i can make this i can change the scale of the width of the height alone or just the actual uh size overall i can also crop so for this one i'm going to go ahead into crop here and i'm going to focus on just this section of the photo and crop that. I can also set it to a particular aspect ratio if I want to. I'm gonna hit crop, and now we go to our side-by-side -side view at the top here, and zoom in once more. Okay, so this is what we're working with so far, and when we get to the more clearer photos, you'll see just how powerful this is. I've also got some art, images, uh, and drawings, stuff like that. And I've, I've got an option here to remove some of the blur. I had that cranked up to full, but I've dialed it back to see what results are here. I can suppress the noise a little. I'm gonna scroll down and we've got face recovery. So this is actually finding the features of the face and using AI to sort of produce a face from that image. So if I do happen to zoom out again to say 33, you can see how good of a job it's done considering it's AI'd in some of the features of the face and I can actually dial that back. So this is at full at the moment because it was so blurry, I set it to full originally. I dial the face recovery strength back and it sort of uses less of that feature and we get a few funny artifacts. I'm gonna keep that at full for this image and I'm gonna go down over here and, and deselect it. Our next one is actually gonna be a, a bit of a grainy image. So I'm clicking this one here and you can see how grainy the image is. And it's actually tried to clean this up as well as upscale it because I've got suppressed noise on. I can actually play with these settings a little bit, see what I get. Once again, face recovery is at full, I dial it back and maybe I try standard or an automatic model, see what it actually comes up with. So you can see by exploring these models, giving it automatic, it's done a good job of cleaning up the face, but there's also still a fair bit of noise off to the side here. So I'm gonna suppress the noise full. So we can not only upscale, but improve. You can see here the original image is actually pretty high res, 3600 by 2405. And if I keep this going, it's gonna be 21,000 pixels. So once again, I will quickly crop this image. You can see the head is quite a small area. And that's actually looking pretty good considering. It doesn't look like a perfect photo, but you get the idea. So I'm actually gonna go in and untick this. Because you can see we've got settings listed here. By ticking these, I'm actually able to affect the settings uh, sort of individually. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a few images from here. I'm gonna choose grid, all these grid images here, because they are actually AI art images. And so we can actually affect art pretty well. But you see it's got some artifacts here. I've got, I can actually go through, test out a few of these, figure out what the best model is. Art and CG is pretty good for this so far. I'm gonna go to lines or standard. You can see how when we got something like this, which is mostly line work, it does sharpen it up a fair bit and do a pretty decent job. Uh, maybe we need to like dial back some of these other settings. And I can see how this is gonna look on some of these other images. Now, if I go towards the face, we can see what kind of results had first. And it's not too bad. If I click on this next image, which is this panda, it's a little bit less, a little bit more depth to it and has done a great job of upscaling that and 
sort of producing a lot of detail and this is going to look pretty good 6000 by 6000 pixels not bad considering it started at 1024 by 1024 so i can use this workflow to choose a series of images to work on see the way it's pixelated here and much smoother over here it's done a great job of making this look a little more 3d if i try to go somewhere else maybe towards the horn up here keeping in mind this is 50 percent so if I actually zoom in to say 200%, compare this area here to the original. It's actually pretty impressive. I come down to the emblem down here and you can see the level of detail it adds to these images. So I've set up my AI art images in here and I think they're looking pretty good. So I'm going to untick them because I'm happy with those settings. And I'm gonna go through with a few of these photos and I'm just going to let the automatic setting take them and we're gonna have a look at them all at the end. So we'll go automatic. You can see the difference in detail already from this image to that image. Pretty impressive. The detail from this to that. If I zoom back out to 50%, it's done a really good job with the squirrel. You can see some of, some of the repetition here, but I mean, when you're upscaling a small image, this one is 640 pixels wide, you get a pretty good result. Very impressive. Now I chose this one for the detail on the trees to see what results we can get and check that out. It's almost created like the branches 640 pixels wide again looking pretty impressive look at that detail we come down to the road see how it's added the grass and some of the dirt trail looks a little bit natural as well even the leaves on the ground topaz has really got a great ai for, for filling in the details on these images when upscaling the hand i've chosen this cat here i'm going to zoom out a little bit see how it's added in hair refine that hair and done a great job with the eye if i zoom right in i'm going to say 200 percent on the eye and see how it's really done a great job of upscaling that giving a good reflection compared to what we see over here so we can go through I'll crop this one so we have this face here i'm going to zoom in to about 50 percent and it's kind of sharpened this one up a decent amount. I'm going to actually get the face recovery. It's on. I'm going to dial it back a little bit. So it looks a bit funny up close. Not 100% perfect, but I mean, with a few more adjustments, we could probably get it looking pretty good for now, I think. If you consider how we're introducing detail into the image as we enlarge it, it actually is really uh, very powerful for if you've got a small image and you want to try and increase the size of it for print or something like that. It does a great job. It does a pretty good job of photos considering that photos, you know, it's hard to introduce detail, it looks realistic. Art, it seems to be doing really well with, but I've also got this blurry photo here and look at what it's done with the face. It's used AI to introduce the facial features based on what imagery it can get. So if I move across to the opposite face, check out the detail it's able to add to that face. This could be such a powerful tool for people trying to increase and improve their images to get more photorealistic uh, looks out of it. So I'm gonna keep scrolling down and I'm actually going to actually select all and unselect because I've got a few more down the bottom here that I thought would be very interesting. I'm gonna start off with this Twitter image, which is actually my logo. I wanna see how well it handles logos. I'm gonna choose Art and CG and zoom right in to 200%. And it's actually done not a bad job. I want, it's it's a little bit soft on the edges, but it is treating it more like an image, I guess. So we can also try the automatic or maybe lines, low resolution. Let's try more automatic. And that's pretty good. So it's not the best solution for up, upscaling logos and images like that, but it is still pretty good if you need to bring up that size somewhere. So I'm gonna unselect that. Moving on to the next one, which is Abraham Lincoln. I'm gonna skip past this one and come back to it. So this is a photo of Abraham Lincoln, very low resolution, as you can see, and it really doesn't have access to many facial features, but it still does kind of look like him. Not quite perfect, but I mean, considering what you get out of it, that's not bad. You can't always, at the end of the day, creating information that isn't there, you're always gonna get a, a, bit, a bit of a funny result. But considering that, it actually looks pretty impressive. Uh, this is a public domain image I thought would be fun to upscale. I'm going to quickly crop it. And moving on to the last image. Now this image I have downsized and if you zoom into a, uh, a little bit more, you can see how heavily, the, how heavy the artifacts are. So I'm going to see what we can get out of Topaz with this particular image. 
check out how well it's cleaned up that image by removing those artifacts. So it is really great, not only for upscaling, but improving the look of images. So I've gone through, I've adjusted all the settings I want. I'm gonna to go to select all and save 15 images down the bottom here. And it's gonna process all of them in a batch. I'm going to put these into a custom folder, preserve the source format. I'm just gonna make them JPEGs. I want the quality at maximum. And I'm just gonna start. And you can see it's gonna go through and batch process all of these. And we're gonna have a quick look to see how well it's handled these images once it's done. But for now, I'm basically gonna walk away for about probably 10 minutes. When I come back, this should be all done. Okay, so I've lined up the original images along with the upscaled images, and we're gonna have a bit of a look through. You see the original, very blurry photo we created here, moving on to the upscale, and we've cropped We've managed to bring out some facial features and it's looking pretty good. Keeping in mind that I did rush through these settings and you could probably get even better results if you take your time. Here is the original. We've got the grainy photo of this guy eating his dinner and still fairly grainy, but we've actually managed to enhance the face and bring out more of the facial features. Uh, but this is still a fairly large image and quite big. And considering how grainy it was, I think it's done a pretty good job. We've got the original AI art of this bike right you can see how blurry the lines are when you zoom in when we go to the next one you can see how sharp it all looks so this could be a great one for for, up, for increasing the size of illustrations i actually uh, tested this on some illustrations of my own it did a great job but here we have the original sort of like we've got this blurry panda which is ai art keeping in mind once again i could adjust these settings further but i have got a video dedicated entirely to ai art topaz so check that out in the description below but I go to the next one and things are looking a bit sharper. Then we have this AI art image, which is a pretty, pretty large size, but still fairly blurry. If I move on, all of a sudden we have a bit better detail and things are looking a bit better, better for print. This is actually just an illustration, public domain, not very high resolution, but if I go to the upscale, you can see how it smooth things out and we could probably improve the detail a bit better as well but overall we can actually print this at a much larger size if we want to because of the effect it's had on that image we've got the squirrel once again a bit blurry and it's really clean this squirrel up and enlarge it this one looks a bit funny i think we would actually have to play with the settings a bit more but overall still good these trees again i zoom in and there's a lot of detail missing but for the settings I sort of used, which I kind of just threw at this, when we go to the upscale, it's done a great job of kind of faking some of that detail. And this was not a big image. We're talking 640 pixels, not a lot of information to work with. And we've been able to upscale it to something that's pretty impressive, which I think is very cool. The hand, again, small image, pretty, pretty blurry and upscaled, smoothed out a bit, looking a bit more impressive. The cat, looking okay upscale and it's smoothed it out it's enlarged it check out the eyes we've got a much bigger image even the nose looks like it's had some detail added to it uh, it's done a great job with the cat this is the original image of the lady's face you see it's a little grainy and the image is actually fairly high resolution already but zoomed in and we've got something a bit better and i do believe it actually has been displayed better in the final render than in the actual preview we were looking at earlier. So much higher res version of the image, a little less grain and a big bit of grain in the background, but uh, there is also Topaz D, uh, Denoise and Sharpen we're gonna be reviewing at some point as well. So keep an eye out for those videos. This one I found impressive. See how blurry this image is? When I go to the upscale, all of a sudden the facial details have been introduced. You can actually kind of see these people. Now keeping in mind it is faking a lot of this stuff it is AI, it's faking the teeth and the face, but vastly superior to the original. Now this is a tiny, tiny image of my logo. You can see how blurry it is up close. When I go across, it's upscaled it. It's okay, not great, but uh, worth a try anyway. This image is very highly, uh, sort of a lot of JPEG artifacts. I've saved it at the lowest resolution, low, lowest quality I think I could and it's managed to do this with it. Even though it doesn't look like a perfect photo, I think it's done a great job considering just how far along and compressed it was. 
So you can see, really see the, the power in this. We're trying to throw a lot at it to see if we can get it to break a bit. And I think we've done a pretty good job of getting something decent. And I haven't played with the settings extensively. You watch me play with them and they're pretty straightforward. Finally, we have Abe Lincoln. There is nothing here, apart from some very, very vague information. But when I scroll across, we get this image. It's smoothed out and there's a little bit more information of the face. I think that's pretty impressive considering how bad the image was. So imagine what it's work if you're a professional uh, working with larger images, artwork, and you've got the time to spend because you're getting paid, or if you just simply have some home photos, you can spend a bit of time working on these details because these photos were absolutely tiny. Now I do recommend, if you wanna check it out, go to the description below, you can try this for free. You can go to Topaz, download the free trial and try it out. And then if you're not happy with it, don't worry about it. If you are happy with it and you wanna save your images, that's when you can get your license. Otherwise, uh, in the license, you can either pay for the gigapixel upscale, I think it's about hundred bucks, or get the full photo AI suite, which I've got. I think that's about 200 bucks at the time of filming. Check that out. And uh, it's really awesome, very powerful. And you only pay pay for pay for it once, and in, in 12 months, if you need updates, you might have to pay again. But you're only paying for it once. You can keep the same version going. So that's pretty much it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Check out some of the other Topaz videos I'll pop up here. Otherwise, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.